This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. All right, I'm not so sure that I signed up for this this morning. When I woke up, I didn't think I was gonna be going in the water with a 15 foot croc, but uh, hey, I'm ready to do this. Well, it just so happens I'm in Australia right now filming some really cool project that I really can't say much about. I'll tell you guys more in the future. So I went back about four years ago to some footage that I shot in Darwin, Australia that I've never shown anyone. And I decided I was gonna make a four part series starting with saltwater crocodiles. You're watching Snake Bites. I'm here to see Adam Britton today. He's one of Australia's leading crocodile guys and he's gonna show me something really cool and that's how crocodiles act underwater. And I've got the tools of the trade to get it done. Adam, how are you? G'day Brian. How are you doing? How are you? Sorry, I've got my hands oh, yeah. full here, but... Uh... Oh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'm uh, happy to meet you here. And I can't help but notice uh, here I am in Australia looking for an awesome Australian crocodile guy your uh, accent doesn't quite sound Australian. No, I come from the UK. I come from West Yorkshire, okay, which is where all the best crocodile wrestlers come from. Yeah, and I'm thinking, where does a guy from Yorkshire figure a fascination with crocodiles? I don't think you're going to find them in the outside pools out there, are you? Well, I was fascinated by crocodiles when I was a little kid. I was fascinated by dinosaurs and giant lizards and dragons and you name it. And suddenly I figured out, well, crocodiles are actually still around on the planet, so that's what I want to work with. And so I, it was a long course, and eventually I finished off the studies that I had in the UK, and I thought, right, I've got to go to Australia and work on crocodiles, otherwise I'll never forgive myself. So yeah, I pretty much sold everything I had in the UK and funded myself to come out here and took a chance, and it worked, and here I am, working on crocs. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad you're here because that's why I'm here too. I want to check out the coolest crocs that I can possibly figure out. And so what do you have to show me today? Well, the coolest crocodiles are saltwater crocodiles. Everyone knows that. And we've got one of the coolest saltwater crocodiles in here. His name is Smog, and he's about 15 feet long, which is about 4.7 meters. So he's a monster. And uh, what's the plan with these chickens? Well, the chickens are food and he loves chickens, anything white. So we're gonna see what we can do with him. Well, I gotta tell you, they look, uh, they look real scrumptious. It's, uh, I don't know, are you hungry? I think my appetite is quickly going away, so let's hope Smog is ready to eat some chickens. You would better hope so. <laughs> Come and have a look at him. All right, so I'm seeing this sign. Is there really a 15-foot croc in here? Oh yes, there is. If you don't believe me, just have a look over the fence. Uh oh, I can hear it rustling around right now. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. So it's pretty cool. This whole facility actually was really designed for filming. Okay. Because a lot of natural history shows out there, basically, they want to get some really great shots of crocodiles underwater. So we built this to look like the Daly River, right. which is quick, clear water and it's got lots of native fish in there and crustaceans and all kinds of cool stuff. But you can't really get in the water in the Daly River or you get eaten. So we've set this up specifically so you can safely get in the water and film the crocs. All right, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what this croc is actually going to look like underwater. It's pretty amazing. I tell you what, when I woke up this morning, I had no clue that I was going to be in the water with the 15-foot croc. But again, I'm on this adventure. I want to make sure that I'm going to make the best of it. Just like any good croc wrangler, I've got the tools of the trade, which is this camera and this stick. So Adam, am I good to go? This is all I need? <laughs> what are you gonna do with that? Well, I've gotta get some really cool shots of this croc underwater. Not with that, you know. First of all, it's only about half the length that you need. And secondly, that looks like it no, could be pretty tasty, actually. Looks like a pretty big stick to me. What are you talking about? No, no. I'll tell you what, let me propose something better. Take the camera off the stick, and you go in the water holding the camera. You'll get a much better shot that way. All right, so let me get this straight for a second. There's a croc in the water, and you want me to go in the water. Seems a little bit crazy. I don't know what you guys think about this. Yeah, we're crazy here in Darwin. Fantastic. No, seriously, it's, it's actually quite safe because actually in the water there, 
there's a steel barrier. So you can get in the water behind that barrier and the crocodile will not be able to get to you. Usually I wouldn't get anywhere near a crocodile without a good stick, but I guess I'm gonna trust Adam on this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this stone. I'm gonna throw it in the water next to his head and you'll see just what he does when the water surface is broken. You ready for this? Well, I'm not sure I'm ready, but let's do it. Okay, here we go. You can just see his head over there. So, one, two, three. Holy crap! Oh man, that's a lot bigger than I expected, Adam. He looks, he looks even bigger when you're in the water. Oh my gosh. Whew. Right, remember, before you go into water, don't touch the fence. Don't touch the bottom. And if you do touch the fence, let go immediately. Otherwise, you're gonna lose your fingers. What were those rules again? This is the part where Brian gets the shock of his life. I hope he's filming this. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely crazy when that thing lunged out. Oh, it's so much larger when you're right up close to it. It's really quite frightening. I'm so glad that there was that barrier between us because when that thing jumped up, my heart was just beating a million miles a second. But at the same time, it's just so incredibly majestic. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be on the other end of those teeth though. So you're, you're still there? He didn't die of shock. No, I tell you, that was absolutely incredible. I tell you, when it was all foggy, you could hardly see, and then just slowly, he just kind of crawled up or swam up, and when he came into view, my heart just started pounding like crazy. Just the fact that it was, it was so close and just so mammoth was, oh, it was incredible. When it finally jumped up when you fed it that chicken, Oh my gosh, my heart was just like pounding like crazy. It was, the adrenaline was just so insane. It was, it's unbelievable. This is just one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. Well, do you want to do it again? Because I've got another half of a chicken, remember? I'm ready. I'm wet. I'm ready. Let's go ahead and do it again. Okay, let's see if we can get a shot of him grabbing the chicken this time. Oh, let's do it. Okay, he's back in the feeding position. So let's see if he can grab it this time. Holy cow, I tell you what, I thought that the first time it was pretty exciting, I tell you. I don't know how many times you have to do this to stop the adrenaline from going, but that was still quite a trip. Adam, the thing that I was the most amazed about was the fact that the animal seemed to sense what was going on around. Now I know there's places you can be in with crocs, but not like this to where they actually can feel you. Tell me a little bit about those senses. Well, he is totally aware of where we were at all times. Even when we were walking up, he could hear us. They've got excellent hearing. It's actually better than ours. They've got really good eyesight, which again is better than ours because they can see at night. But the sense that's most useful for them in this situation is the ability to detect pressure and vibration. So when he's under the water, usually can't see too well, can't hear very well underwater. But as you're walking up to the water surface, you're making vibrations as you're walking along. And he can detect those. He can move right into position, right into the best possible feeding position. And then as soon as you break the water surface, bang, that's when he's gonna grab you. I tell you what, Adam, this has been an experience of a lifetime. I tell you what, it's been awesome and I can't thank you enough for it. Next Pleasure. time I'm going swimming, I think there's gonna be pool tiles on the bottom. <laughs> I'm here on the Adelaide River and the jumping crocs are what make this place extremely famous. Now this is an incredible sight right here. I'm told that his name is Hannibal. He's about a six meter croc and it's something you're certainly not gonna see too often. You can see it even has some scarring on his head, certainly been in its share of battles. 
I've got to imagine this guy's been around a lot, and I'm really happy that we had a chance to check him out. That's what we're looking for. Everyone wants to see the big ones, don't they? And we're always looking for them. But there really are not very, very many big crocodiles. They were hunted, hunted almost to extinction up until 1971. Most crocodiles, like uh, we've seen earlier there, are around three meters. They have little or no fear of man. All right, so I'm here with Shay Lee, and she's the specialist when it comes to feeding jumping crocs. Shay Lee, I've got to start to ask, what brings a lovely lady like you into this profession? <laughs> it's definitely not a job you aspire to when you're younger, but love it. Absolutely now, how long have you been on this, this whole adventure? Uh, about 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. That's a lot of crocs you fed, huh? That's a lot of crocs. All right, so I guess what I'm hearing is you're going to let me actually feed one of these guys. So I'm going to need the lowdown. Give me the rundown exactly what you're trying to do to get the best results of these jumping crocs. You want to be quick. They're very quick. So the trick is now he's just sneaking around under us, so we don't want him to grab that meat before we get him up. So. Your job, once he comes to the surface, we'll try and lead him around the front, up on the bank so you can see him in all his glory. There's literally crocs all around us, and this one's actually pretty interesting. You can see it's gotten into a tussle, and it's missing part of its front lip, which is pretty incredible, it makes it pretty ugly. Wow, this thing is incredible. It's quite large, dude. Yeah, let's give it a go. Your job? No, my Keep job is to... attention on that meat. Hang gotcha. Up. Gotcha. How close am I supposed to be getting here? That's <laughs> Oh, you got... Should I jump down and get the other one? Jump down and get uh, the meat. Let me get my camera if you're going to do that. <laughs> but uh, on, a, on a scale of one to ten, where do you rate me? Maybe a two? I was going to be generous and say a three. Oh, but three. Fox would love you if you come out here like that. <laughs> Feed for nothing. Well, whenever you have a... A 12 foot croc, 13 foot croc just looking at you after you just fed it and it doesn't seem like it's quite satisfied and, and I didn't do a real good job. I think I just gave away some meat. He's thinking this guy must be a sucker and it must be pretty easy prey I think. So after my first attempt of uh, not doing such a great job, Shaylee has told me that what I really want to try to do here is make sure the croc's not looking at us. But I also don't want to give it away as easy as I did the first time. So I'm just going to keep them over here, see if my reaction is a little quicker this time. Just snap with it. Yeah, teach him how to do it. That's right. You can pull it out again, right? Okay. Oh, no, that's right. No. Uh, just before the string breaks, sometimes you can just get it out because I've got to open that mouth again. I think I'm going to keep my day job. I don't have a feeling Peter's going to hire me anyways. I'm costing him too much money in meat. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, Shay Lee, so I don't know that I did such a great job over on the land, and I noticed that crocs on land are a lot more sluggish. They're much more graceful in the water. What my goal is is to see this sucker jump out, but I think I want to get you to show me how to do this first so that I don't fail so miserably and I can get a little of my street cred back. Right, sounds good. First jump mine, next three yours. All right, sounds <laughs> good. So the whole little secret behind it is, as long as you hold it nice and high above the head there, you'll see them start to lift the head up. Yep, arch your back, drops the tail down. Now that was incredible. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do this, but uh, I'm going to give it a go. Slow and fluid. Yeah, I used to play tennis, so I've got this one down. All right, so first thing I want to do is basically tap it, yep, get it over here. So it knows where I'm at. Keep it above its head, high enough. All right, come on, bugger. I know you want it. Oh, that was awesome. I think I finally did it. I did it and it didn't even get the meat. So I'm in good shape here. Yeah. Look at her, she's ready to go again. I've got this down now. This. Oh. Wow, how awesome was that? All right, I've got a little bit of redemption out of this one. It's, uh, I think it might have been the croc more than me, to be honest with you. And Shay Lee was certainly a great teacher. All right, Pete, so that was an awesome experience. I've got to ask you, what's my future like in your business? You can have a job if you like. You've obviously got a real affinity with, with reptiles. It's, it's, uh, it's not often we see someone who can jump a crocodile that easily. Oh, well, that's... It's, it's all about that slow fluid movement, and you had it straight away. I'm amazed. Now, how many years have you been doing this tour? About 15. 15 years. How many tours a day? 
four. Four tours a day, so that's a lot of a lot of times you've been out on that boat. Well, I've been out a lot, yeah, I'm not here all the time, but uh, yeah, yeah. You get to know the crocs pretty well, I mean, the individual animals. I notice you seem I to know I try not to, funny enough, I try not to. I think that's a very, very bad thing to, to get too involved with crocodiles, because there's nothing nice about them at all. Yeah, yeah. I noticed you mentioned that yeah. there is nothing, I mean, what's nothing. your opinion about crocs in general? Um, well, they're everywhere, and uh, they're fantastic animals, and we've got to learn about them, learn to live together, which we are. What we've got here is incredibly unique, though. And uh, don't ever think the crocodiles are nice, they're not, they're all bad. Okay, interesting. <laughs> well, you just heard. remember that, you'll be okay. <laughs> well, you basically heard that here from Pete about how crocodiles are. Well, Pete, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. Yeah, no, thank it's you for coming. Fantastic. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank and, you so uh, much. Yeah, we'll give you a job next year if you want to come back. I'll be back. Tell me what time. <laughs> all right, thanks, Pete. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as I enjoyed feeding those huge salties. My next Australian adventure, trying to catch some freshwater crocodiles. Until next time, this has been Steak Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.